So our bioclastic sedimentary rocks, bio being life and plastic being stuff, stuck together, are going to be our rocks that are made up of things that were once alive. So it will be the seashells of something or the carbon from um, plants or animals distilling into coal or turning into peat. But it doesn't mean that every time you see something that is a fossil, that it is a bioclastic rock. So here we have a fish fossil. So this one is a, a specimen of shale and it's the little fish that you have trapped within that shale. So sedimentary rocks, uh, the bioclastic and siliclastic can all entrap fossils. So this one here is a siliclastic specimen with a fossil within it. When you get to bioclastic and it refers to fossils, unlike our fish fossil there where the most of that piece is the shale, with a bioclastic specimen it's made mostly of fossils or it's made mostly of the carbon from something that was once alive. So here we have little tiny broken pieces in what's called a coquina limestone. So you have the um, calcite that was precipitated by organisms creating their shells. So we have these calcium rich shells, which once the animal has shed them accumulate along the ocean floor. They can break up just through natural processes, perhaps the rolling of waves or the eating of these um, shelled organisms by another animal. But in the end, you get all these little tiny broken pieces of shell that have fused together to form limestone. You can find something like this uh, pretty readily in shallow waters where you have abundant shell bearing life. So this one here is called coquina. Coquina is the broken up fossils. Something that people tend to mix up with coquina quite a bit is this other fossil-rich bioclastic specimen. Here we have this gorgeous ammonite, you can see, and you have all the little other pieces of ammonites. Um, this ammonite was uh, scratched out specifically, so you can tell if you look really closely, you can kind of see uh, chisel or pick marks where somebody had removed the rock around it to really highlight this one individual fossil. Looking at the other side, you can kind of see the shape of seashells. And so this ammonite here, these other, um, these other bivalves that are trapped in here, these are all full specimen or full shells. So we have a different type of um, limestone here. This one is called calcerinite. And this one has full or whole shell speci specimen. Our other specimen of calcernite here, we have all these little tiny um, shells that kind of look like unicorn horns. And so even though these ones are really small, you still have the full shells. There's a cross section of it there. But across the side, this limestone, it has full shells. So this one's also calcernite rather than coquina. Our other specimens of bioclastic, I showed you previously our peat. This one is made up of little bits of plant, and you can even see the roots that were in there. Now this plant hasn't been alive for at least thousands of years because this one is a, a fossil fuel, fuel, it's rather old. Um, so these plants haven't been around for a very long time, but because they were buried in an oxygen-free environment, they persisted and were preserved in that way. Also carbon-rich, we have our different types of coal. So within the sedimentary rocks, you're going to find two different types of coal. So you're going to find bituminous coal, and you're also going to find lignite. So lignite is more brown in color, and coal tends to be darker, a little bit shinier. So this one here, between the two, if lignite is browner, and this one's the shinier, blacker one, this one is the bituminous coal. So for your bioclastic specimen, you're not always going to be able to tell with your naked eye that it came from something that was alive. You might have to look closer into it to differentiate, is that coal? Is it actually going to be something that's rich in organics? Um, but sometimes it's really, really obvious because you can see the actual, um, the actual fossils and full shells right within the specimen. So there's some really tiny fossils because not all organisms are going to be huge shell-bearing organisms. 
So smaller, little tiny planktonic organisms that still have bodies, they still have exoskeletons, still leave behind bioclastic specimen. So this here, this is the um, original chalk. So if you think of chalk like sidewalk chalk or chalkboards, that's not going to be made up of little tiny sea fossils, but this one is. What you're using is probably a more distilled down, just chemically calcium carbonate powder if you're using sidewalk chalk or, or classroom chalk. But back before that product was made, the original, original chalk way back, let's say if you're like in the 1940s or the 20s, the chalk that people would use to write on slate, which is also a geologic specimen, I think it's kind of beautiful that chalk and slate were reunited in that way. But if you were using really old school chalk, it would be made out of little tiny microfossils. Now that was discontinued both for um, the purpose of not continuing to mining, not, not continuing to mine these uh, vast white cliffs just for the chalk, but also because if you are allergic to fish, it's possible that you're allergic to the dust that comes off of original chalk. So this is like original chalk, but chalk you could buy online is probably going to be the artificial man-made specimens. So that chalk, you see the little powder left behind on me, uh, that chalk is made up of microfossils, so it's still bioclastic. So those are our bioclastic sedimentary rocks.